Herkese merhabalar, Kripto News'te bu videomuzda önemli bir röportaja yer vereceğiz. Röportajda karşımızdaki isim, Fidesium şirketinin kurucu ortağı Greg Bock olacak. Fidesium'u henüz duymayanlarınız için kısaca bir özet geçelim. Bu şirket, günümüzün ve geleceğin en önemli teknolojisi olan Web3 teknolojisini koruma altına almayı amaçlayan, Web3 kullanıcılarının güvenilir şekilde deneyim yaşamalarını sağlayan ve birçok dolandırıcılık, sahtekarlık ve istismar gibi durumlardan kullanıcıları korumayı amaçlayan bir şirket. Greg e hem Web3 teknolojileri hem de şirketlerinin Web3 güvenliği hakkında neler yaptığını sorduk. Ve çok da güzel cevaplar aldık. Bu teknolojiyi merak edenler mutlaka bu röportajı izlemeli. Şimdi gelin röportajımıza geçelim. Um, so I think the number one challenge is still going to be uh, the UI UX until we can cleanly and clearly onboard people. I think it's just going to continue to struggle to gain mass adoption. I think that is closely followed by safety and security, right? If the first time someone shows up to the Web3 world, they immediately get rugged or fished or defrauded they're not coming back or it's a rare person with that kind of risk tolerance. So that's what we're trying to do with Fatizium, right? Is make sure the experience is safer for everyone. So just raising the security bar across the ecosystem so it's just a better place to be, a safer place to be and safer for your assets. As far as the centralization and decentralization, I think once we crack those first two problems, Web3 is going to be like when the internet switched from hosted servers to the cloud. It was a big deal at first, but then it all happened behind the scenes and no one even knew. Like they stopped caring that's where it went. And I think that's what's going to happen with Web3. It is coming. It is just going to happen, but it will just start taking the place in the back end of things and people just won't even know they're using it. It'll just be a better solution. Oh, um, actually, I think the regulation will be very, very good and help. And I don't think it'll slow innovation. I think it'll speed innovation. What's stifling a lot of stuff right now is because there is no clear regulation, everybody is scared to step a foot out of line. And so they're checking themselves because they're so afraid of being in violation of some rule that hasn't been written yet. Even if the rules are kind of crap when they come in, at least everybody knows what they are and they can work around them. The problem is now, it's just at a whim of, you know, Gary Gensler in the US and the SEC just firing out Wells notices and, <clears throat> oh, that utility token. Well, today that's a security and like everybody loses their mind. And it just, it, it fills the industry and the ecosystem with a lot of kind of like, undo fear and pressure. So I think the lack of regulation is actually stifling. We get clear rules, even if they're not the most beneficial to the ecosystem, <clears throat> at least they're rules and it's gonna take a lot of weight off people. And then people can just get on with the business of building proper Web3 companies. Uh, so I think uh, the intersection of blockchain and AI is really interesting. So I think what's going to happen, it's not just going to be AI influencing blockchain, but it's going to be blockchain influencing AI. The decentralized nature is going to allow specific nodes of AI to keep your personal data private and personal, and you'll have self-custody of that information you use to teach your AI. In the same time, AI will go across many different verticals in blockchain and help speed development and efficiencies of, you know, how code is written, how flaws are found, uh, tracing back wallets, uh, AML, sanctioned entities kind of stuff. The thing is, the, the two tools will work really well together, but um, I think AI is such a buzz and the AI people think it's just going to be AI affecting blockchain. I think there's going to be an equal move in the other direction of blockchain uh, affecting how 
AI is run and distributed. So, I mean, I think it is actually a very bright future and I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, I don't know if there's anything that will really stop the fluctuations and stop <clears throat> a downturn in spending in the bears, in the winners, but I think it's gonna be less severe I, in both directions. I don't think the peaks are gonna see the crazy explosions, but I also don't think the winners are gonna see these crazy depths. And anyone building real projects, I think is gonna have a much easier time through the winters nowadays, right? Once upon a time, you know, the bull run hit and cometh, and then it smashed down and there was just no funding because everyone got emptied by the drop. You know, in the beginning it was like this and that wave is currently slowing down, which is eh, bad for the people who like the crazy ride, but very good for the long-term stability of the companies. I don't think we have to do anything. I think the problem is naturally gonna kind of find level by itself which means you will be able to build through the bear markets in the future. There will still be, obviously, excitement and pumps when the bulls hit, but I don't think you're gonna have quite that cyclical run of companies moving forward. I think it is really, I think it is already mostly stabilized, and I think that stabilization is just gonna get better and better.